Hey guys, Nishquick here. I have to get this off my chest. I wasn't really gonna make this video, but I just really want to talk about it. And I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. We're gonna talk about Metacritic scores again. <laughs> Last time I talked about that was a couple days before Tears of the Kingdom launched, and oh, the comment section for that video was a little crazy, so I hope this one isn't as bad, but I don't know, I'm hoping for some healthy discussion down here. Anyways, I want to talk about a couple games that have come out this year and their legacy and their critic review scores and the two in particular I want to talk about are The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, obviously, because I mean, I talk about that game occasionally on the channel, here and there, every now and then, and Baldur's Gate 3, never thought I would talk about Baldur's Gate 3 on the channel in the year 2023, but here we are. Let's cut right to the chase. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 is reviewing very well. It is being played by many, 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 many people on Steam. It is being highly reviewed by the people reviewing it. But it is also causing a lot of discussion online that it should be part of the game of the year conversation, part of the discussion, and all that. And honestly, I'm going to say this 100% transparently right now. I know next to nothing about Baldur's Gate. I've never played a single Baldur's Gate game. I have not even played a single CRPG or character RPG myself. Never played them. But honestly, it looks pretty cool for the people who enjoy the D&D stuff, that whole kind of gameplay mechanic. This is the game, this is the premiere kind of experience for that. But I want this discussion to have a little bit of logic in here. And I am tiptoeing around, I'm going to be walking on eggshells because I know I might anger some people. But here is the thing. All in all, I want to talk about how one video game success should not allow you as a consumer or a gamer to use that as fuel to put down another video game for their success. First of all, let's look at Tears of the Kingdom. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is sitting right now at a 96 on Metacritic with 145 critic reviews. And the user score is 8.4 with 8,345 ratings. Amazing, very good, of course. Let's look at Baldur's Gate 3. Wow, look at this. 97 Metacritic score. 9.3 user score. User score is very good, 9.3 with 3,296 ratings. Metacritic score, look at this, it is 97, that's very good, it's got the must play. It is the highest reviewed game numerically in the year of 2023, right now. It is the highest game numerically. I'm saying numerically because it's got a 97, whereas Tears of the Kingdom has a 96, right? Look at this, 16 critic reviews. I mean, 16 critic reviews, that's fine and all, but I, I again want to say that 16 critic reviews versus 145 critic reviews. So I, I, I don't think I even really need to say this, but I can tell that Baldur's Gate 3 is successful. I can tell it's a good game. I can tell that many, many, many people are enjoying this. Many critics, many fans, many gamers are enjoying Baldur's Gate 3 because it looks good, it plays well, it is just expansive, there's so much you can do, it's so much content. But right now as this stands, as it stands, right now with these critic reviews, I personally, myself, don't really know how this really can compare with critical reception. Again, I say 96 with 145 critic reviews versus 97 with 16 critic reviews. That's why I said it is the highest rated game numerically, but Tears of the Kingdom has way more critic reviews. User score is another thing. User score is an entirely different thing, but my point is, why are we jumping to conclusions saying Baldur's Gate is the highest rated game of the year? Oh, it's finished. It's finished for Zelda. I'll get to that more later, but I just want to 
say that with such a small sample size, I don't think that really leads to me making a conclusive statement on saying that, hey, this is this is really up there. I don't know what could happen when the PS5 version comes out, when more critics get review codes and all that, when there's way more reviews, maybe even like at least 50 plus reviews, then we can have that conversation. And again, like I said before, I am very unqualified to talk about this game. I don't know anything about this game, but right now with these metrics, it just looks a little off. It looks a little weird. Uh, and now let us move over to someplace else. Unfortunately, we're going to move over to Twitter. So I'm going to end this recording here and go over to Twitter to show you guys some stuff. I'll be right back. Alright guys, hello, here we are on Twitter, um, I'm sorry to bring you guys here, also I'm not gonna call it X, even though I just kinda did over there, but anyways, I want to show you guys some stuff that I've been talking about with this game. So this tweet kinda blew up, here I highlight 14 critic reviews versus 130 plus, oh, I forgot to add the plus, I just wanted to have it in that ballpark range, but look at this. Down goes Zelda, Baldur's Gate 3 knocked Zelda off its pedestal, gold medal. Seeing Zelda get dethroned is something I could never imagine happening this year, la di da di da whatever. This account has said some other very interesting things about Baldur's Gate versus Zelda. And I wanna... Yes, yes, see, Baldur's Gate got the must-play badge. Well-deserved badge, all that. Here is the big one. Rooting for Baldur's Gate to win, but honestly, if some other game ends up beating Zelda at the Game Awards, then that's fine with me. Well, first of all, ah, he has Game Awards, ah, Game Awards, that's another crazy discussion. If you guys remember, I even made a video back in, like, May or something like that where I said Tears of the Kingdom is not a lock for Game of the Year because everyone keeps saying Tears of the Kingdom is a lock, Tears of the Kingdom will win. I don't think it's a lock because of course you have games like this, you have games like Starfield, you have games like Final Fantasy 16, you have Spider-Man coming. This is a very stacked year for games. But look at this. Nintendo's anti-consumer, all that. They destroy fan projects, all that. The Disney of gaming, oh, cease and desist. This person right here is using Baldur's Gate 3's success of uh, let's go back and see, yes, 16 critic reviews with a 97 critic score over Tears of the Kingdom's 140 plus or 130 plus with a 96 to come out and say that Nintendo doesn't deserve this award, Nintendo is not a good company, Nintendo is full of bad people who sue everyone and they're the Disney of gaming and all that. So my whole point is... Why must someone put down another game to elevate another game's success? I could have easily <laughs> said Tears of the Kingdom the 96 makes Final Fantasy 16 look like an abysmal failure or whatever. I don't believe that. I could have said it. I don't believe it. Because Final Fantasy 16 was a success, it was great, it reviewed well, like an 88 or an 87 was very good for Final Fantasy 16. But that's not what we should be doing. Like, look at look at what Botox Games here is saying. Also, check out his channel. Really awesome, really cool guy. You already know once more reviews come out and it drops some, like all games do with more reviews, people are going to try and say reviewers bombed it on purpose to get Zelda higher. It's always one-upping another game versus another. It's always saying, oh, my game is better than yours. Oh, my game is better than yours because it got one point higher. Oh, my game is better because of this and that. And that's why I'm saying this is good. This 97 is good, but let's be a little logical and just wait it out. And I'm not saying that Baldur's Gate's 97 is undeserved. I'm not saying that it doesn't qualify to meet that 97 or anything like that. No. I'm just saying that, one, wait till more reviews come out because around 14 to 16, less than 20 critic reviews doesn't really tell me much. 
like if I go out to like a restaurant and I'm looking at reviews on Yelp, I'm going to go to a restaurant which is like a 4.4 with 100 reviews versus like a 4.5 with like two reviews. You know, it just has a little more credibility. But also, Baldur's Gate was a success. Baldur's Gate was good. But this should not be used as fuel to say Zelda goes down. Oh, Zelda was never good. Zelda always sucked, all that because that's just petty that's just sad why are we putting down other games to elevate other games in return and let's see i agree once the ps5 version comes out it'll balance out more metacritic isn't the end all be all obviously yeah vg mobster says metacritic isn't the end all be all and it isn't it isn't that is what i was saying in my other metacritic video about tears of the kingdom why does anyone care about the score yes like, why? Why does this even need to be said? It's very petty, it's very silly. There's an overreaction on this. However, the game seems to be that good, I just don't like the comparison. And many instances is from people who are quick to judge. Baldur's Gate 3 reviews are glowing and it seems that it will remain near 95, but that doesn't distract from Tears of the Kingdom. It does not. These are both Ws. These are both wins for Nintendo and for Baldur's Gate 3's developers. So, yeah. Let's look at some more stuff and I want to highlight some other people's responses. Let's look at Mr. Siren Gaming here. Also, check out his channel. Very, very awesome content. We, <laughs> yeah, so he quote tweeted me over here and he said this We sound like haters, but when one has literally 10 times as many reviews with the same high score, I just want people to realize how crazy this all sounds. This is not a very, like, good look. It's a very silly argument. Like, all of this, did you really pray for Nintendo's downfall? Because this isn't this isn't a downfall <laughs> a game a game reviewing higher than a nintendo game it's not a downfall and again when it comes to game of the year most games that win game of the year maybe may not be the highest rated game of that year it's it's just fact that's just how it is maybe oftentimes it is like that but oftentimes it is not like that so that's also something we should keep in mind let's go back to my profile there's a few more things that i want to talk about ah here it is okay baldur's gate 97 can't see it right now but it's at around like it's less than 20 critic reviews so i took the time to say this i don't want to drag the metacritic discussion on for too long i might may or may not make a video on it well i did <laughs> but once again i want to ask where was the love for future redeem when it was reviewed like this plus this number of reviews. This game was also less than 20 critic reviews. It also got a 92. Oh, 92 is five less than a 97. It is four less than a 96. Oh, no, no, no. Well, any game that gets a 90 or above, that is an automatic win for the game. But also, here's the thing. Whenever I talk about critic reviews and stuff like that with friends and other gamers, I don't mention Future Redeemed. I mention as a personal niche quick game of the year because I loved it so much, but 92 with 12 critic reviews isn't really saying much again. It's not saying much. And I have said that to people and I might have some evidence of that on here on Twitter as well, but this isn't really like, it's not a indication of the quality of Future Redeemed, but even though Future Redeemed is very good, it is on par, if not even better, than <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom and Xenoblade Chronicles 3's base game. But again, like 12 critic, re 12 critic reviews isn't much to go off of, but here is my buddy Lunatunes. Here's what he has to say about this. Is this a reference to Baldur's Gate? Because I think this game is getting so much attention because eight times selling, because it's selling eight times its expected amount plus the high Metacritic score on top of it. Baldur's Gate performing this well is very unexpected and therefore exciting. I 100% agree. Yeah. And I responded by saying, yeah, I just don't like people trashing on other games to elevate their success or their win. And Lunatudes, of course, just says, just sounds like some fanboy girls partaking in console war. Yep. Holds no real value. But my point is, we should celebrate wins, we should celebrate successes, we should celebrate achievements in games. We shouldn't say, oh, my game reviewed higher than yours, my game is better than yours because it sold this many copies or that many copies. Because my game of the year last year was a game that didn't even hit 
2 million copies. It was Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which still has not even reportedly hit 2 million copies, but it was my game of the year. I was happy to see its name be announced on stage. I was happy to see its music being performed at the end of the show and all that. And even though it may not have worked out as much as I thought, in the ways that I thought, I am just grateful that I got to play a game like this. I'm grateful that it existed, I'm grateful that it was a success for Nintendo and for Xenoblade fans and Monolith Soft fans. But again, I want to say, Baldur's Gate 3 is a success. It seems to be a very great game. A lot of people are playing it on Steam. A lot of my friends are playing it. A lot of my friends have pre-ordered it on PS5. Maybe I might even give it a shot, but again, like I said in the beginning of the video, I don't have much to say in that regard because I'm not really qualified to talk about this game in terms of my kind of inexperience with this genre and the series. But I still have to say, Putting down one game to elevate another is not cool. It's just, it is a little silly. It's a little tacky. It's a little just very, as you guys say, as many people say, it's a little cringe. And I don't ruffle any feathers by saying this, but let's go back to that one tweet I made. 14 critic reviews versus 130. This isn't me making a jab at Baldur's Gate 3. This is me saying 14 critic reviews versus the 130 doesn't give me a wider kind of scope of people to get this opinion from, you know? Like 130 critic reviews versus 14 critic reviews. It's just a little more credible. <laughs> I I hope that's something that you guys may agree with i mean i don't know if you guys disagree with me let me know respectfully in the comments below but i do feel that way and some other people have even been saying i don't really feel like finding the tweets or the takes right now but a lot of people are saying that Oh, Nintendo probably slipped in some cash to get these review scores. Oh, Nintendo probably slipped in some money to get this many reviews done and all that. I I am very shocked and appalled and very sad to hear those kinds of takes because, again, go, going back to something like this, Nintendo's anti-consumer, all this, they're just using this as fuel to combat Nintendo and talk all this stuff about Nintendo, but what about other companies? I, I think Nintendo does some very unfortunate and sad and cringy stuff, but so do other gaming companies. So does EA, so does Take-Two, so does Sony Interactive Entertainment, so does Square Enix, and yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say. So if you're putting down one studio one game to elevate your game your favorite games win or something like that it's i i don't know what else to say because when elden ring came out and i enjoyed it i was talking all the praise when xenoblade came out i never went back and said oh elden ring was never good elden ring sucked oh uh, i love this game so much more than elden ring and Z all all the El elden ring fans should play xenoblade and all that I, I I don't know that that's the kind of unfortunate things about game gaming nowadays but it is also kind of the beauty of games because there's so many amazing games out there and we just people online just like to share our opinions we like to share our takes we like to share our opinions and it's just weird to see some people put down games to elevate their favorites and i don't think that should be how people go about doing things but anyways i'm going to cut it off here i've been rambling quite a bit let me know what you think in the comments below let's keep it civil let's keep it nice and good and i don't know we can have some nice discussions down there but let's not throw any shade at any other game or anything because that was my whole point of this video i don't want another game's success to diminish another game's success as well. 
and as much as I might have my problems with Tears of the Kingdom, as much as other people might have their problems with Tears of the Kingdom, you can't deny that it did succeed and it did do some very, very awesome things. Just like how I cannot deny that Baldur's Gate is currently doing some amazing things right now. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe and like if you enjoy content like this. This is Nishquick signing off. Have a great day and go play some great games today like The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or even Baldur's Gate 3 which is on PC right now. I'll see you guys in the next one later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left. And if you aren't subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button on the way out? I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and see you later.